if I had a country, I'd give a State of the Union. But I have a law office, so let's give the State of My Union on this episode of Underlevel. I'm a business and real estate lawyer, and I guess in many ways people are asking for me to provide like a state of the union, but I don't I don't have a union. Like I don't I lack a union to know everything about to provide its state to all of you. In my little circle though, I guess I could provide the state of my union. It's not really the union, but the state of my union, my law practice, we're a business and real estate law firm. So we are definitely seeing businesses and real estate companies and how they're dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people just assume that all businesses are shrinking and that everybody is concerned about how they will stay open. The truth of the matter is that's not accurate at all. For example, there are some companies out there that went from manufacturing like towels and microfiber products of that nature and instead are now making masks. In fact, the people that make our unbillable t-shirts, my friends over at Kid Dangerous, visit kiddangerous.com, they make masks now. I mean, in other words, they've been able to pivot and reposition themselves from an area that may have been slowing to an area that is now growing. That's really all you can ask for from an entrepreneur, right? It's kind of like coaching football. It's the ability to adjust, make changes, in the moment that can be most advantageous. Obviously, when the competition is paused or kind of stopped, you can always take a moment and reflect and then see what you can change. Like for example, in my own office, I use some of the downtime to see how can I develop more of a relationship with the clients that are forming corporations or LLCs. And so I kind of design like a package or sort of a, a group of services I could provide them. So although I'm not pivoting in real time, by the time we come back to kind of opening after the closure, at least the first opening after the first closure, maybe I should say, oh boy, I have something new, something a little bit different, something that I think might better address the needs of the client. So how you're using this time, I mean, I don't wanna be, be one of these people that says make sure you're being productive, but the reality is you're watching a vlog involving legal topics and developing business and real estate entrepreneurial issues I would definitely encourage you to be using this time to kind of grow, develop, and if needed, pivot your business. I mean, people get together and they tend to kind of, I like to use the phrase, commiserate. They have like a herd mentality, a mob mentality. It goes back to the idea that like when you're with a group of people and one of them starts behaving a certain way, maybe yelling, screaming, shouting, it's more likely for you to join in that yelling, screaming, and shouting. I mean, there's a lot of instances of situations where people have been caught up in the moment, right? Caught up in what's going on around them and maybe get carried away. That's that same mob mentality. In many ways, when it comes to business and the success in business, it's your ability to avoid that mob mentality. It's that your ability to be unique, to bet on yourself, to ignore all of those other voices that can lead you to success. So going back to my state of my union, I see a lot of the real estate world, quite frankly, being very busy. The real estate agents who have pivoted to a more inviting online presence, whether it comes to showing houses in the most literal sense, meaning providing like a video, kudos to my man, Luis, I know he's making some of these videos, videos for online open houses, that's creating more interest in the home and then leading to a scheduled visit in person where everyone social distances or wears masks. You also see sort of the development of the business. How are they acquiring clients? What, are, what kind of steps are they taking to find new business? You see people using not just the same traditional means, maybe taking steps to find clients in new and unique methods. Like for example, I wonder if there's a restaurant out there that when they put the little tape over the top of the bag, like have you ever seen that where they tape the bag shut when it's delivered to you? Why not let another business sponsor that? Like, I think it would be kind of fun to have the sticker on top of your to-go bag from a nice restaurant say, this bag is secured thanks to the efforts of the attorneys at Afsar Law Group. I mean, if you think about it, we try to provide protection type services for our clients. So it wouldn't be a bad thing for us to maybe work with a local business, work together, especially if it's maybe the type of business where we share clientele. And now obviously I'm kind of using this, giving it to you from my own perspective, but like if you're somebody out there that can think of a way where maybe if you're a security guard, a security company, it would be a great one for you, right? It's just a way to look at your business. Like think about what the service is that you provide.
running out of juice here, baby. <laughs> this is what you want to film? This is, this is what yeah, you want to get? This is content. This is, this is content right here, baby. Oh. All right, shh. So, when I say the state of my union, the real estate side, I mean, again, if you've been able to pivot and adopt these types of changes, if you've been able to pivot and adopt them in a good fashion, well then you're staying busy. Quite frankly, the real estate market is probably hot because there hasn't been a lot of construction since the last fall off, since the last bubble popped, and it's like never before seen low interest rates. So that would be a reason for you to be maybe encouraging people who are thinking about buying or selling homes to buy and sell homes, even in a global pandemic. Now, the other side of what we do is the business side. And quite frankly, in the business world, it really boils down to how you're addressing the cutback in business. I mean, there are some businesses that are doing better. It's not just real estate, but generally speaking, most of my clients are contacting me about limiting expenses, cutting staff time, which is just another way to say limiting expenses of employees. So basically, it's basically a idea. Basically, it's basic, think about that. But it's the idea of being able to reduce your expenses, right? There's only, there's only two ways to make money. You either make more money or you cut your expenses. So these are what they're trying to do. The interesting thing to me is some of the wealthiest clients are taking different approaches. See, normally I like to see, I wouldn't say I like to see, but normally what I do see is clients taking similar approaches. And then it makes me go, oh, that's why these guys are all successful. They do similar things. But during this pandemic, it's very different. From one client to another, it's very different. From one business to another, it's very different on how they're treating things. I have some high-end clients who are cutting money from their own pocket, feeling as though they have enough to weather this storm. And so they're keeping all their employees on staff, even though it's not necessarily good for the books, if you know what I'm saying. I have other equally as well-off clients who are cutting staff and eliminating positions in order to reduce expenses because they're doing what's best for themselves and the business. And you can't really hate them for that either. Two totally different approaches, and we won't really know which one's the best one until we kind of get through all this stuff. If your staff is specialized and they're good at what they do, you better believe you don't want to let them go because chances are they'll be working for your competitor. And again, not just any staff. If you have someone who's no good at their job, well, then they're no good at their job. Don't worry about it. But when you have people who are good at what they do and they work for you, you want to hold on to them, right? Especially especially if they're good at what they do. That's the key to this thing, right? Now, no one should ever be more important than the owner. I think we all know that. That's just not me in my situation, but everywhere. The true motor of any business has got to be the person at the top. It's got to be the person who runs the show, lead by example. That's my philosophy that I follow. And the other philosophy that I follow is making sure that I subscribe by clicking over there and watching another episode by clicking right down here.